<clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for coming to listen to our pitch. We're Team Better Care. Um, my name is Max. I'm a first year medical student. I'm Nick. I'm also a first year medical student. I'm Edward. I'm from the School of Management. With Better Care, our goal is to hack implicit bias in healthcare. So I'll talk a little bit about how implicit bias works. Um, this is an element of our brain that helps us process information and make decisions in sort of short amount of time. Um, so if I'm crossing the street and I see a car um, driving really fast towards me, the first instinct is to just jump back onto the sidewalk and that's kind of how implicit bias works and we all have it. Unfortunately, that also helps us make, make decisions about people we interact with. Um, and within healthcare settings, physicians have been shown to act upon their biases against um, racial and ethnic minorities, LGBT people, obese patients, um, the elderly, uh, differently able individuals, and women. Unfortunately, this leads to worsening health disparities. For example, studies have shown that African-American patients are much less likely to get adequate pain treatment for all types of pain, or also they're much less likely to get, for example, rushed to the cath lab uh, if they show um, signs of a heart attack in an acute setting. On top of that, the different barriers that um, such patients face outside of the healthcare um, system can compound uh, on the effect of implicit bias. Imagine being, um, say, an elderly black woman w struggling with food access and going into a uh, clinical encounter. The f potentially, because of the bias, the physician is much less likely to confront the aspect of food insecurity in that setting. Um, and that has an impact on the quality of care that this patient is going to get. So hence why, um, those structural vulnerabilities, as we call them, end up having a, neg a sort of a negative interaction with their health disparities. Unfortunately, health systems have not yet found effective and innovative solutions to address the issue of implicit bias. So what we're proposing here will be a web app platform to teach physicians about implicit bias and structural vulnerabilities with clinical applications and key takeaways. Our platform would follow the um, framework that cognitive psychologists are recommending um, for hacking bias, meaning one, the first piece is motivation that has to come from the user. Um, second, information, so educating the user about the psychology behind implicit bias and the clinical implications and impact that has on different patient populations. Um, next is the emotion aspect, which would be positive reinforcement and positive feedback as a user is going through the, um, the app, and ultimately orientation, which here come the key takeaways that we would provide the user. So what's new about this is that, one, we're providing our users with sort of a longitudinal and digital learning platform in ways that hasn't always been the case when it comes to implicit bias. And why is this important? Bias in our society tends to be something that's a little bit taboo to talk about in public yeah. settings. Um, usually in hospitals or in medical school, the way this is addressed is in group settings or in lecture where individuals may feel burdened um, by having to have, to have such discussions. So we're offering users the opportunity to sort of confront these biases and their attitude in the face of bias in their downtime and sort of a private setting um, to not had to feel that burden. Additionally, we're aiming to address both implicit bias and structural, structural vulnerabilities and how they interact with each other and ultimately have an impact on patients. Um, and then the gamified aspect where users will have the opportunity to apply their knowledge that they gain throughout the application on clinical scenarios to make it a more interactive experience um, and providing them with sort of key takeaways. Now, in terms of competition, uh, there are a couple of companies there um, that exist that aim to address implicit bias, but they either um, talk simply about implicit bias or um, focus on a notion of cultural competence. Now, for example, Be More America focuses on hacking bias in healthcare, um, but most of these um, settings tend to be one-time interventions, and research has shown that one-time interventions don't have a lasting impact 
um, on physicians beyond 48 hours, and we see how that can be problematic, especially if these interventions are costly. Um, now, the issue of cultural competence um, has also been shown somewhat to reinforce um, some stereotypes within uh, different groups um, because physicians are expected to um, sort of know all the different aspects of the different cultures that they may be taught on. Now, so now we're, we're proposing with better care would be a digital and longitudinal um, experience that will implement both the idea of implicit bias um, and stru structural vulnerabilities. I'm gonna pass it on to Nick. Okay, great. So I'm gonna talk for a little bit about our development process. In uh, the next three months, we'll be consolidating the content that we plan to use uh, with, with our program. Uh, so this is gonna mean you know, academic literature, um, as well as compiling information in the local area about uh, structural vulnerabilities that patients may face. And as well as we're gonna be producing the, the application itself and testing it and producing a beta software to pilot, which will be the next six months. We're first gonna start the pilot with residents and students. Uh, we're gonna be using, looking mainly to see the usability uh, to optimize for the user's approach to the tool as well as uh, m improvements that, the, that are seen in the individual's ability to act, to act on uh, the, the information that we present to them and actually produce better outcomes for their patients. Uh, after that, we'll pilot it at our first client site, which we are hoping to be Yale New Haven Hospitals. Uh, at, during this time, we'll continue to receive feedback and use this to uh, improve upon the app, in, such as usability, as well as um, to use this as a, to gauge the metrics that we're getting. Uh, so we'll be tracking the users uh, and receiving information and using that to uh, make the application more robust. And then in the, the next stage, the final stage, we'll be enrolling our first client. At this stage, we'll hope to be uh, incorporating local information from, in this case, the New Haven area, uh, from sources such as better, uh, sorry, a Data Haven who produce community uh, resources and kind of gauge what the population is like here. So part of that is really important is individualizing this, individualizing this to a site-specific nature. Because um, like Max said, we don't want to uh, use these innocuous kind of cultural competency measures to define a population. We want to look at what's actually happening and where you are. So this is kind of like a little bit of what the, the product's gonna look like. Um, if you can see in the, on the left-hand side, uh, it'll be, this is like the, the home page uh, where you'll be able to look at implicit bias, or go into the clinical scenarios and learn more about structural vulnerabilities. So the implicit association test is a tool that we'll be using to help uh, the user become more self-aware of their own implicit biases. These are tests that have, have been shown to uh, help elucidate that and uh, by having the user go through this process, they'll become more mindful of what they might bring to the table and hopefully this will motivate them more to address these issues through the learning curriculum that we have in place. Uh, and to pair the implicit bias with the structural vulnerability component, uh, those are really interconnected. And so by educating on both, we'll hope that the user uh, actually improves. So in the last bit, we'll be testing this by having clinical cases that are a model that's used today in medical education, uh, but we'll be targeting not towards the medical condition that the patient's presenting with, but more to kind of address how a physician might go about addressing structural vulnerability um, in, in these patients. Um, finally, the user will be able to monitor them, their progress through the app, their educational uh, development, and uh, this will be used as well by the health systems to, to kind of track their overall progress with the user interface. I'm gonna hand it off to Ed, who's gonna talk about our market. Thank you, Nick. Can you guys hear me in the back? All right, all right, perfect. Um, so, there's about 5,500 hospital systems in the US currently, and this accounts for over $3 trillion of our annual GDP. And this shouldn't be a com come to a surprise to anyone. This is a huge market. The healthcare industry is a huge market, but what many people don't realize is that about 10% of that, about $309 billion, accounts for unnecessary costs due to healthcare disparities between various minority groups. And if we also acknowledge the fact that um, healthcare systems spend anywhere between $7,000 to $80,000 per employee per year for training purposes. This is, this is a significant market to be had. Uh, and the average employee uh, training is about $1,500 in the US. And so 
leveraging this opportunity, uh, we plan to price our product as a software as a service subscription based on the number of users and the length of the service. Our target clients are obviously going to be healthcare institutions, medical schools, and even insurance companies. So basically, um, any stakeholder that can gain from the cost savings uh, from our product. And from a growth standpoint, uh, as Nick mentioned before, we plan to pilot it in Yale New Haven in the fall. And then we expect to have about 15 hospitals by 2020 with 10,000 registered users and $3.6 million in revenue. And so this concludes our presentation. Thank you so much for the judges for giving us this opportunity and we'd love to take any questions.